Let's cover how you can personalize the, the WinBid Pro software when you open it and kind of make it behave the way you want it to. There's a few things you can change and we'll go over those. But first, uh, assuming you've installed the software and some catalogs, we can now double click on the V15 icon to go ahead and get in. The very first thing we're going to see is the login window. Now I've already added a name here, but the default that you'll see without doing anything is guest. So that works, but you can always um, add your own name, which personalizes things a little more. So to do that, you hit Edit Add. You would just hit the Add New button here. Um, and you can just type in your first and last name and hit Tab, and it'll go ahead and add that uh, username automatically. We hit OK. The rest of those things uh, below that you didn't have to fill out right now because they're not being used anywhere, but eventually they will be used in something and you can you can go ahead and add that stuff in later by editing your record but uh, once you add your username you can go ahead and select it and then hit the select button that'll show up right here and you can also click the drop down to um, pick a different name from the list if you need to but uh, when you log in that's if multiple people share the same computer now if multiple people share vendors you're going to want to watch the um, sharing vendor catalogs video because it talks about how to set that up and in that case each person definitely needs their own username so keep that in mind and uh, so once you've selected the username you want here we can go ahead and click OK and then the next screen that will come up is the select a vendor window so this is where all your vendors would show up I only have the sample vendor but uh, you would just pick your vendor from here so this is good for people that want uh, that almost every time they get into the program they're picking a different vendor because they're you know doing a bid for a different company or whatever but that's how it opens automatically and then so after you select your vendor the next thing that automatically opens is the list of jobs for the vendor that you have selected so you would pick your job now and hit select now there's a checkbox at the bottom here that says open job on startup that means if you check that once uh, the vendor is selected, it'll automatically open the last job that was used for that vendor. So you can change that here or in the system defaults, which is what I'm going to show you in a second here. So the next window that would show up is this tips window. And this is mainly for new users, but it's also helpful just to re remind you basic things to look for and do in the program. And we can just hit OK to close that or the X. And this also has a checkbox that says don't show this at startup. So if I check that, then this window wouldn't show up anymore. Um, but that's also settable in uh, the system defaults window. So in, another thing to remember is make sure um, there should always be an elevation on the screen when you're in the program. The only exception is if you're adding a new job when you get into the program. Like in that jobs window, if you hit add new, you can then create a new job. So after you... Uh, name an elevation, pick a framing system, then it'll come to this screen and it'll be blank. But what it's doing is waiting for you to put the number of panels, the quantity, um, width and height, that kind of information, and then it can draw the elevation. So that's the only exception to not having a drawing on the uh, on the screen right away. So the next thing is uh, the system defaults. Let's look at system defaults, which is down here in the in the menu tree. So we'll click on that and this window has a lot of um, percentage kind of settings and some the other settings I mentioned about how the program opens so that, let's look at that first so open last job when program is started that was that checkbox at the bottom of the jobs window but I can also do, select it here where I can say open last job when program is started that means don't show me that jobs window and it'll open the the very last job you're using the same thing goes for vendors. If you don't need to see that vendors list every time you get into the program, I would select yes here and it won't show me the list of vendors. So it'll use the vendor that you were using when you last got out of the program. So the other things in here are saw blade allowance. Uh, it defaults to an eighth of an inch, but you can change that to whatever your saw blade is. The add to arch for bending, you could put a value in there for um, if the bending company needs extra material at the end of the, the actual cut length of an arc then you add that in and every time an arc is used in an elevation it's going to automatically add that 
amount to the uh, cut length of the arc. And um, so basically it adjusts your cut length. And then the next thing, oh, and, and if you need extra material for your arch material, like if you need to duplicate it for um, in case of problem spending or, you know, damage or anything like that, you're going to have to add it either in the optimizer cut list, um, cut pieces window, or you can add extra stock links in the final parts window. So a couple ways to deal with that. Just remember that's something you would have to do kind of manually. Um, so your markup rates here, the uh, markup, you can actually assign different markup values to the different types of material. But, um, you know, obviously if it's the same for all material, you'll just put the same number in each thing. Uh, other costs, that would be your outside costs. And this is all in the markup report where you'll see these, these values again. So these are your defaults. And this is what will show up in the markup report for a new job. But then for that job, you can change these values for that job and they only change in that job. So your defaults will always stay the same and those will only be set in this window. And uh, so you might not want to set other costs markup, which is uh, outside cost or uh, rental fees, things like that. Or you can, you can go ahead and mark it up depending on what you put here. So same thing goes with sales tax here. Uh, you can have different tax rates for different types of material. You cannot tax labor. You cannot tax your other outside costs. Um, so depending on what you need to do, you enter the values there. And, you know, 10% would just be a 10, 8% would be an 8. So that's how the values need to be entered there. Metal surcharge and glass surcharge, that's um, a lot of manufacturers are charging um, transportation fees or fuel fees or whatever. So you can apply that as a, as a basic rule to all your different jobs and all your bids. So this is like the main program-wide setting for that. And then you can change it at a job level if you need to. So uh, those are your basic um, surcharge rates there. These note fields down here for your markup report, at the bottom of the markup report, there's some notes. And in this case, they can be company-specific notes, not job-specific. So if you need a note to show up in every single markup report or every single bid you do, um, you would apply, you would enter that note here. So something like a legal disclaimer or a reminder to all customers or, you know, things like that then you would uh, enter that type of note here. And I mentioned sharing vendors in the, the sharing vendors video. This button right here would let you set the location of the master file, which is necessary to share vendor catalogs. So um, that pretty, pretty much is it. The, oh, the other thing here is that tips window. Remember it had a checkbox at the bottom. This is also where you can check and, or hide and unhide that, uh, that tips window. So keep that in mind. These export messages, to hide those, um, every time you create, if you tell the program you want to create Excel files or PDF files from the reports, um, it will automatically come up and say, this is the name of the file and the folder that it's saved in every time that report is created. Um, if you don't want to see that message anymore, you would check this box to hide it. So, you know, after you're used to that feature, you know where the files are, you know how it's going to name them. So you don't really need to see the message anymore. So you can come back here and check that. And uh, so that pretty much covers the system defaults. So those are settings that get saved for your, your username. So that's another reason to have your own username is because these settings are specific to you. And uh, once you set them, it saves them. And you can just go back here to change them if you need to. So that's pretty much it. We can go ahead and get out of there. And uh, be sure to watch some of the other videos. There's a lot of different topics you can learn about.